Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Theory Thursday. So every week we get together and we have a bit of a deep dive into one aspect of Blood Bowl. Whether it's stats or strats, we really just look and see what we can find out that's going to give us an edge on our opponents. Now this week we've got a bit of a um, a bit of a concept episode for you, which is around rolling the line, but really it's about controlling the line. And when I say the line, I mean the line of scrimmage the offensive line of scrimmage. So we've having, we're have having a look at loads of formations on the channel at the moment for how you deploy your teams and in what way and what advantage you're going to get. But there's also a lot of equity to be given around that line of scrimmage and maximising your free blocks. Whether you're trying to kill, control or create separation, there are different things you can do to maximise the line. And that really comes down to rolling it one way or another and how you pass those players between them. So let's have a look at rolling the line. But before we go into it, I have got a little bit of theory for you that I use at the beginning of every one of my offensive drives. And yes, I've stolen another one, and no, this fortunately does not have anything to do with being set on fire. Stop, drop, and roll. So the whole premise here is stop. You've set up, have a look, who's got what, what's going on, drop. Drop your players into protection for the ball, get those supports where you want them, line up that blitz. Leave your turn in a place where if something goes wrong, you are happy. Position to end your turn right now before you even start rolling the dice. And then roll, roll the line, roll those dice and uh, just go rolling with your offensive scheme. So like I said, stop check the pitch check those skills and check your turn before you do anything and we are looking at the offensive line here but we're really looking at the beginning of the offensive drive you need to stop you need to check who is where and check what skills the worst thing you can do is not know that someone here is actually strength four and blodge and you are positioning the rest of your team assuming that they are actually just alignment check check the pitch check those skills and check the turn because oh it's the worst thing in the world where you set up for a three touchdown a three turn touchdown drive and it's actually turn seven or you set up ready to go and you didn't realize that actually it's turn seven and you're not going to have time or they're going to have too much time because it's only turn four know what's going on on the pitch because that is the only way you will get the most equity out of what you're about to do drop so the second thing to do is to drop players into coverage okay so we've got the line here we've got your opponents there you will have a return contingent all right and now you've already checked to decide what kind of speed you need to be what you're trying to do you need to plan to fail at this point you've not done anything okay you've checked what's going on you need to drop two players down to secure that ball you've got a third one lined up to pick the ball up later on that's fantastic but what you need to do is drop players into protection and at this point you can also line up for a blitz as well so if you want to um, control this side and eventually you're going to blitz up here move your supporting piece into there right now because if it ends at least that player is marked so stop take a check of everything that's going on on the pitch and then drop get ready to uh, to fail okay drop the players to secure the ball secure those markings and then if you want to this is the point at which you start rolling dice drop that target player go for that big blitz because if you end your turn now you have the advantage of the line of scrimmage you have that ball secure that's fine you know what if you go one into one on a blitz he's double scholar blitz that's fine you've not lost anything because you've marked this player here you've marked everyone on the line of scrimmage you've marked that ball you're in an okay spot and then roll okay so maximize your line of uh, scrimmage blocks this is where you start to go and you're going to roll this cage so the whole element here and this is where we're going to talk about this factor is rolling the line to protect yourself so if your ball ends up here you want to roll everything this way if you have deployed heavy on the line of scrimmage regardless of what's going on you want to roll them again uh, the other way and what you're trying to do is create separation or containment but you are trying to build a screen. So if you have secured the ball down here, you want to push players over here. You've already dropped players into coverage here, here, here. Okay, so if your opponent wants to counter-strike, they're going to end up 
coming against your players and then you get free rolled a bunch of blocks here to push your opponent further away from the ball and like I said you're going to roll them along the line maximizing those blocks but this is also where you determine your line of scrimmage strategy okay if it's containment if it's killing or if it's separation okay if you're down players if you're playing Skaven and what you want to do is free up some of your players to then continue to build this screen game to support with your blitz that's what you need to do if you've got the advantage in strength and numbers you want to go to kill so you want to be passing these along and maximizing those blocks and if it's to contain what you want to do is roll these players into the center bringing your follow-ups around to basically create a nice little l shape where your opponents are here and that with a bit of coverage here and your blitz element here and your ball element here you have got a screen and your opponent is not going to be able to counter strike and when it comes back to your turn they're going to have lined up giving you free blocks again so what we're going to try and do here is kind of demonstrate rolling the line left so all right it's entirely up to you so we've got a standard setup here of three versus five so we're going to look at the closed three here the open three doesn't change things massively um and the plan here is we'll assume the balls ended up here we've dropped down people to coverage what we're going to try and do now is roll this line this way get more space between your opponent's players and the ball and start to build that screen while maximizing the amount of blocks and really all this is going to do is demonstrate that blocking into another player identifying your supports is going to give you the most rolls here so where we've gone five wide it protects us from if the ball lands here if the ball lands here it doesn't matter at all because we've got assist here assist here and what we're going to do is we're going to farm these blocks along the line and contain as well so we're going to get three four good blocks in here and leave all of their players in one or more of our tackle zones so block one is going to come from our center player here we've got the supports on either side so we can go either way whichever way you need to roll that line um, but what we're going to do is we're going to farm this player off all the way down there now the center is going to stay in place this player is still in two tackle zones and what we've got here is that still marking player here so we can get another good block on this player and farm him out now like I said, we've already secured the ball. So if everything goes wrong, if anything goes wrong here, this is still contained. We've still got marked players everywhere and it's still going to be in our advantage going into the next turn because we've got that numeric advantage. So it protects our players. So you can pull this off even with a fragile line. So second block will come from this blocker here. Again, not following up because this player then becomes supporting themselves. And this one is still tagged in this place. Now, if you consider that a no skill block is uh, going to knock somebody down on 55% of the time, we've just taken two two die blocks here. This player is probably on the ground, but if they're not, and this is the plan here, they are still contained because they are still marked. And it leaves us with a marking player on this side of the line and a marking player on this side of the line. So it gives us flexibility to kind of cherry pick which way we want to go with the block next. And the way we are going to go with the block next is this guy here is going to punch this dude and farm him down the line. What that's going to mean is probably another knockdown. But, and this is the clever bit, this player is now a marked player. So we've had two blocks on this guy one block on this guy and we've still got one more great block here from this player into this player with this player supporting which is going to leave him there that's four solid blocks and is going to leave us in this position here and the whole point of this is to punch as much as possible and contain so this player follows up and then we can see that we have got marked player after marked player all along this line if these players want to come out and attack the ball here they're going to have to go a very long way around and if our opponent wants to counter attack on that line of scrimmage they are going to need to bring players to this edge here and this edge here and you know what while they're attacking the line of scrimmage what they're not doing is attacking your ball contingent here who is going on a jolly little scoring run and the cool thing is if you want these may be knocked down you may end up in a situation where this player's on the ground, this player stood up somehow, and you've got this one down on the ground. So you've got an extra support here, and you might just get free rolled another two die block. And if you want to, and you're quite happy with the position, you can swing someone up here and get another two block. But at that point, it, you're just glory blocking, and that's good. But we had four two die blocks here against most opponents that have left us in this kind of L shape screen. 
We've got defense here, we've got a blitzing contingent here, and our ball is secure. We are rolling on the offense and we've rolled left. So we've done a bit of kill and we've done a bit of contain in the last example. Now we're going to look at the open three and all we are going to do here is maximize our blocks. So this is a situation where the ball is quite deep. You are very happy that it's secure. You've done all your homework and now we get to take our five players and just go ham on the opponent. And we are going to have a look at a block sequence that's going to absolutely allow us to maximize those blocks and it starts with this player here. So player on the edge here, we've got some supports and the same thing is true of every single setup. Identify who your supporting players are and which way you can block. So we're gonna go left again because consistency with our little screen and the first block's gonna come here because we've got a support, we're gonna farm them off. Now what that immediately leaves us with is either a free player, if this guy goes down, or a follow-up block to farm them off even further along if we don't. So let's pretend that our two die block has not worked out. So we'll follow it with another one. Because this player is supporting, this player can push them along and push this player even further along. And by that point, you're kind of two really good blocks to knock them down. Then you're left here still with three on two. So if this second block goes wrong, it's fine. That player is over here. It's marked by him and you've got three on two in this line of scrimmage part here. But we are in this for the maximum block. So we've got two already and then we can start piling in the additional blocks here. I can't be bothered to go through the graphics here. But you've got some really good angles here. So he's... Oops. Got to be careful when I do that. This player is supporting. This player is supporting. So your next block is going to come from our center piece here. And if we're going to go left, then the best thing to do is to block this dude into this situation here. Stay in place. And then you've got this one supporting to block up and out. And then this one supporting so you can block this player and leave him up here. So what you've done then is you've farmed this guy off twice, got two good blocks, farmed him over, followed up with one good block there followed up with one good block there and you've managed to put a very good contained situation on there as well as just being able to block the heck out of your opponent and that is going to help you with so much victory equity and leave you in a situation something like this where even if these guys are not dead this one's far out of the way this one's in a ton of tackle zones this one's in a ton of tackle zones and they're gonna have to go up and round if they want to attack but realistically five two die blocks they're not getting up again. So we've looked at kill and we've looked at contain. Now separation is the other thing. So we do talk about this when we look at quite a lot of our formation videos. You can deploy in such a way where you've got fast threats on the line that don't need to be involved in combat. Now you can stack the line in such a way that you can potentially put gutter runners and catchers and things like that just there to be supports to make these guys block even better. And because you are on the line of scrimmage, you are in a really good place to speed forward. Now, tight end kind of players do a really good job here. Ones that can block, but also can catch, for example. Human nobility blitzers are superb examples of this. So this blocking strategy here is all about freeing up these edge pieces while making good blocks on all of your opponent's line of scrimmage, pushing them back and following them up. Now, because of the way you want to block in this, you're going to end up with two on three. So you are going to end up um, slightly more vulnerable but you free up two of your players so the other strategies you can see we've committed four or five guys to fight in this situation we're going to commit three to fight and two become free and the key to that is the same with every other one of these strategies look for your support pieces and decide which way you want to block and depending on where the ball lands that's the right way to do it so first block here comes from this player and this player is going to use this support and block up and in. So we are, again, going left. We're not going to move this player because that player then becomes a support for this player. And then this player can block with the plus one and farm him off and then follow up as well. So we've got one good two die block into another good two die block. But most importantly of all, this player finishing here tags all of these. So there's no risk there's always risk in Blood Bowl, I guess. But there's no risk that if the next block fails, marked, 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 marked. Okay, 
you are left in a really good position but in this place you've got one support here so the third block will be coming from this player here it's going to push this one up and follow up and you're going to end up with like i said at the beginning two of your players in three of their tackle zones but you are making three two die blocks no skills, 55% chance of knocking him down. Some skills, 75% chance. So what's likely to happen is maybe you'll get one of them wrong and it'll be a push, but you can end up with two players on probably one of your opponents standing. Even if they manage to stand both of them up next turn, they might get a two die block against you, but that's cost them three activations to punch one of your guys. That's really good odds. But now, most importantly of all, these guys are tagged. And these guys are completely free. So you can go on any kind of walk you like. There we go. Let's do the face. Because you've got two of your tight ends now free with three two die blocks winning. And the last process we'll quickly look at is the Savage 6. So we've looked at five versus three setups because that's going to be the most common. Your opponent in most situations, unless they are a heavy bruiser team, are not going to want to deploy too heavily on the line. But the Savage 6 is what happens if you want to put an extra player on there or if you are deploying on a seven wide formation anyway. So you're the bruisers. And the element here that you need to focus on is if it's okay if you have got a solid defensive contingent if you don't need to score but most importantly if you are for example up a player or two you get to just go fighting and the beautiful thing about the savage six is it will demonstrate a 2v1 getting two two nine blocks now obviously for this entire video we're assuming everyone's equal strength just easier that way because the uh, the process is going to be useful no matter what's going on so the whole idea of the savage six here and it works if you've got seven players if you've got seven players it means you've got additional supports on both sides so if the ball lands here you can push this way if the ball lands here you can push the other way but you're going to be using those assists here to block a player to there you get an extra support there so that's two dice and then when you finish up in that position you are going to be left in a place where you've got yet another support so every one of these two players is going to be able to block through and then block again with a second punch and then it's going to work here block one block two block one block two you're going to get six blocks here and they're all going to be supported. So if you get left in a position where your opponent's deployed three on the line, you've got an extra player or you're actually quite comfortable with your returned uh, uh, element, you're going to be able to just farm those blocks. And that is the element here that I am so eager. Look at that. That's going to be your end position. But for me, it is this. And if you take anything away from this video, it is if you are ever left in a situation where one player of your opponents is in next door to two of yours and everything else is fine block like this block up and across do not block away so if in this situation we took uh, this block here and left them there we'd have a free player which would be great but if you are fine if you are on two on two block with this player block it across to there follow up by all means but then block again because two dice versus four dice is the difference between a player being stunned and just absolutely upright and fine and every knockdown you get basically costs your opponent an activation and we are about to make six good blocks here on this line and that means that basically three of those players are going to be down and yes you've had to spend six activations to remove three of your opponent's activations but you get the opening crack at that and you're going to end up with your opponent having no free blocks against you. These are all free. You've got this and you've got your blitz. So you get one targeted attack and six generic free attacks. That's seven blocks across your turn. How many of those are going to be successful? How many of those are going to be permanent? Okay. If you're knocking four guys down in a turn, let's say one of them stunned, one of them's out. Okay. That's a KO or a casualty. And if you can open up the turn, committing this line rolling it in the direction you want to and you get that many chances to take out a player it is quickly going to snowball but remember stop drop and roll protect the ball prepare to fail and roll dice anyway guys hope this video was useful it's more kind of airy very kind of theory than normal but i've been playing some fumble games this week and there's a couple of situations where um, my opponent has blocked in a situation like this and just gone up or left the player there and left this one free and I'm just thinking 
that's fantastic for me because you could add two die blocks there against armor and eight plus piece with no skills and i'm thinking i got lucky that is really good we are now in a situation where you've followed up and my guy's there your guy's there and uh, your player's free sure but i've got a one-on-one -on -one block next turn if i want it and i'm allowed to move and i get the advantage at that point instead you could have just blocked across and taken four dice against my guy and he's not getting up anyway thanks very much for watching we'll be back soon with more blood Bowl content happy blocking thanks very much for watching we really appreciate your support if you want to support the show even further please like and subscribe it really helps us out or come and join us in our patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions see you later